Southwood has a variety of different ecosystems, each one home to animals and plants that are suited to that environment. Three of the most recognizable types of ecosystems in Southwood are wetlands, transition zones, and uplands. Wetlands are low-lying areas that are periodically underwater or very damp. Sometimes we see the water dry up on the surface, but underground the soil stays moist and supports a variety of plants and animals that thrive in this constantly changing ecosystem. Wetlands. Wetlands come in all different forms. Some, like the lake, they have permanent water there. The other wetlands that are called temporary or, to use a technical term, ephemeral wetlands, which means that the water is only there for a short period of time. And there are frogs and amphibians that specifically live in those kinds of areas. So the fact that they're just temporary water in some of these areas uh, and they're not permanently wet doesn't mean they're not wetlands. They're wetlands and they're very important wetlands to a very specific set of animals that live here. Transition zones are areas that border wetlands but are a little higher and drier. One of the classic transition zones in Southwood is the live oak hammock, often seen surrounding the lakes. Oh, a transition zone is, is that area where of change between, say, a lake and an upland. And you can see that in this community around the main lake down there where there's uh, some wetlands right along the edge of the lake, and that's one of those transition zones from the open water to the uplands. Uplands are areas which depend mostly on rain as their source of water and include a variety of trees. Oh, there are a lot of different types of trees you may see there, but some of the common are pines and oaks. There are a couple of types of pines actually you might see. Longleaf pine, they have very long needles, and you may see some shortleaf pine as well, along with some of the oaks, the live oaks in particular. Trees are valuable resources for all of us but especially to birds that use them for nesting, and for the many other animals which depend on the cavities found in mature and dead trees. These are often hollowed out by Southwood residents like woodpeckers and squirrels. That is why dead trees, or snags as they are often called, are not cut down in Southwood because they are vital homes for many animals. Sometimes the tops of these trees are trimmed as a safety measure, but they are never removed entirely. Some birds build nests, like you might see in the backyard with sticks and twigs and the like, but there are also birds that build in cavities. And those cavities are very important to these birds because to have a cavity, you have to have an older tree that's been around for a long period of time. And so that's where these trees, this relationship between these bigger trees that you see in our community that have these cavities, why those birds are here in part, because they're homes for them. The dead trees that you see around, that's called a snag, and that snag makes a wonderful home for woodpeckers and all types of birds. There are uh, bugs that live under the bark the birds eat, and, uh, and every, everything out there takes advantage of this tree. So even though it's not living anymore, it still has great value to wildlife. The variety of plants and animals in Southwood is simply amazing and most residents are excited to discover that they share living space with a wide assortment of beautiful birds, mammals, and reptiles. Southwood is also home to a number of protected species, which means that disturbing them or their habitat is against the law. When we don't follow the rules that we need to have in order to keep the wildlife out there so that we can enjoy it or to provide them with a habitat that, that they've been using for a long time. We diminish ourselves here, we diminish our experience of Southwood and it can also, it can get us in trouble. We can have regulatory agencies looking at us as if we are not being good stewards of the land that we have out here. So those rules are actually more important than people realize and they're not to keep you from doing something you really want to do, it's to try to protect the habitat that you're able to enjoy because it is, you know, it is conserved out here. All of this could be pavement and it's not. One of the most important protected species in Southwood is the gopher tortoise. Many people are surprised to learn that the gopher tortoise is a keystone species that supports many other animals. This is because they create numerous burrows that are crucial for other types of wildlife. Commensals, or species that depend upon gopher tortoise burrows, include a surprising variety of animals. Gopher tortoises tend to spend their entire lives in a small area 
digging numerous burrows. These burrows average about seven feet deep and can be more than 40 feet in length. Smaller animals quickly take advantage of these underground tunnels, using them as shelter and dens for their young. Sometimes even larger animals will take over a gopher tortoise burrow and enlarge it to suit their purposes. Gopher tortoise, um, they're, they're a species that, that dig and live in the ground. Uh, they're land turtle, actually. We call them tortoises. They, uh, they live on the land, they eat plants, and uh, they're grazers. Uh, they dig very deep burrows, and believe it or not, there are lots of animals that live in those burrows with them. So they build homes for others. Uh, they're kind of the original uh, contractors, if you please, in, in, in the neighborhood, because they build homes that other animals will, will live in the burrow with them and can coexist quite nicely. And uh, so they're, they're considered what's called a keystone species. And what that really means in technical terms is those burrows that they create will support lots of other wildlife here that can be found in the community. So there's a relationship between those animals and those burrows. Some of the more interesting Southwood residents that take over gopher tortoise burrows are foxes, the gray fox and the red fox, both of which are protected species. It is common for people to see the reddish hair on a gray fox and think they are seeing a red fox. But once you see a red fox, there is no mistaking it because they are so bright red that people often describe their coloring as almost orange. Gray foxes are slightly smaller, but have a more powerful build, a more compact body, and are closer to the ground. Red foxes are taller, longer, and slimmer, having more of what most people recognize as a classic fox body type. Red foxes are faster than gray foxes, which serves them well because gray foxes will attack them as competitors for food. Both species eat small mammals such as squirrels, rabbits, and mice and also eggs, reptiles, and even insects. Surprisingly, as omnivores, they also eat fruits, acorns, and grasses. Both types of fox are excellent tree climbers, which expands their hunting opportunities. As you can imagine, one of the favorite foods of foxes is another of Southwood's protected species, the fox squirrel. Fox squirrels can build nests, but prefer tree cavities to raise their young. As compared to the more commonly seen eastern gray squirrel, fox squirrels are bigger, slower, and tend to spend more time on the ground. That means shorter grass helps them see farther so they can avoid predators. Although fox squirrel coloring can vary quite a bit, the particular subspecies found in Southwood is mostly black and white. The fox squirrels are, we're fortunate to have them in this community. Um, they're, they're ones that spend a type of squirrel that spends a good deal of time on the ground. They like a real open area, what they call an open understory. They like to have uh, a good sight line so they can see a long ways away and uh, they like to have a lot of trees handy that they can climb if there's trouble. Tree cavities and proper grass height are crucial not only for fox squirrels but also for another fascinating Southwood protected species, the kestrel. Kestrels are raptors, or birds of prey, which include eagles, owls, hawks, and falcons, all of which can be seen in Southwood. The kestrel, sometimes known as the sparrowhawk, is actually a falcon and is very small, about half the size of the largest falcons. Southwood has two different kinds of kestrels, year-round residents and also migratory kestrels. The migratory type flies south to warmer climates, which is why more of them are seen in this area during the winter. Being smaller raptors, kestrels eat prey they can manage, which can include small birds, rodents, lizards, but mostly insects. And this is why shorter grass height helps kestrels. It allows them to see their prey more easily. Many people want to know what they can do to help our protected species and other wildlife here in Southwood. Overall, one of the best things residents can do is follow the speed limit and watch for animals. In Southwood, we lose a lot of wildlife on our roads. When it comes to you know, our behavior in the community and for instance driving cars and, and, and traffic speed in the community, uh, it's important I think that we obey the speed limits, not only for public safety but also for wildlife. I mean there are times that 
you will see animals that are crossing the road. If you were to see a turtle or anything else crossing the road, and occasionally they, they do, you would want to slow down. Again, it's what makes uh, this a great community is we look out for each other, and in doing that, we actually look out for wildlife too by observing the speed limits. In general, the best way to help animals is to leave them alone, neither approaching them nor feeding them. This is for their safety and yours. I don't really advise anybody to go pick things up uh, to handle them. That's not really in the best interest of the, the animal itself and, um, and not in your best interest. Some of them, sometimes they become frightened and then they may bite you. Uh, but that's a natural reaction to being afraid. With all wildlife, uh, the thing to do is to enjoy it, watch it, get binoculars to get a closer look. If you do encounter, um, say, a uh, a snake or a bird or anything as far as that goes. Uh, just remember, they're, they always want to keep a healthy uh, distance from you. Uh, they're probably more afraid of you, actually, than you are of them. And as long as you give them room, essentially give them room, uh, they'll crawl away, they'll run and hide, and they'll take care of themselves. They're just looking to try to protect themselves, and if you give them an opportunity to get away, they will. The best way to help a gopher tortoise is also to leave it alone which includes staying clear of its burrows. The only exception would be if a gopher tortoise is in danger of being run over. If this occurs, carefully move it off the road, making sure to gently place it on the ground in the same direction it is already moving. Also, some people think gopher tortoises are turtles and try to put them in the water. This is not helpful to them and they could actually drown. The tortoise is a land turtle. And so sometimes people are well-meaning. They see a, a, a tortoise on the land and think, oh, it's misplaced, it doesn't know where it needs to be. It needs to be back in the lake. And that's, uh, that's the last thing you want to do with a, with a tortoise. They can, they can swim, but they're very poor swimmers, and their preference is to be on dry land. And the best thing to do is just watch them, appreciate what they do, and leave them alone. Except for residents watching out for them in the road, foxes don't really need much help from us because they are very adaptable and resourceful. However, since they are so bold, they often don't run away and may stop and stare at you. This behavior concerns some people. Every animal is a little different and they all interact with people differently. Uh, fox are one that are, are quite comfortable living in an area like this. Uh, they also have kind of what I consider a natural curiosity. So just like you're curious about them, they're curious about you. And often they will stand uh, a respectable distance away and look at you and just to try to figure out what you're about and what you're interested in. So it's, uh, sometimes that's misinterpreted uh, as, as uh, why, why didn't it run away, but that's just part of their natural curiosity. Fox squirrels are mainly helped by three things. Residents being careful to watch for them in the road, preserving mature and dead trees for nesting cavities, and what Southwood Maintenance does, trimming the grass height, which helps them thrive in our area. Kestrels are also aided by trimming grass and making sure they have cavities in which to nest. This is why we are so careful about preserving our mature and dead trees. You can also build a nest box designed especially for kestrels which makes a great home for them and their chicks. The design for building it is simple and can be found on the internet. Finally, another helpful thing Southwood residents can do to help our wildlife is to turn your yard into a natural habitat. If you look at the things that you can plant around your home, for example, native plants are always the way to go. Um, for a lot of reasons, they're a great investment because uh, native plants cope with the, the environment that we have here quite well, and so they survive well. But those same native plants provide uh, food for wildlife. The wildlife that we have here are used to eating whatever seeds and the like that are, that are grown by native plants. That's one of the things that, that I, really, I think is really important that we can do to create cover and food for wildlife. Anybody can, can create a project in their yard that will really enhance the, the diversity of plants and animals and you know, give them a you know, rewarding experience. For instance, we've seen the gopher tortoises here, we've seen wood ducks, we've seen 
bald eagles roosting in our oak tree in the front yard. We've seen bluebirds, we've seen deer in our front yard, a family of foxes, of course, which were you know, right across the street from us. There's some uh, raccoons that come through from time to time. Um, we see snakes from time to time. It's pretty uh, exciting to be living in a neighborhood where you can, you know, that a lot of people live, but you can still see these things. Southwoods plants and animals are fascinating and beautiful, enriching our lives. Learning how we can live together in a community that is a happy home to both people and wildlife is a good thing for us all.